if your fridge freezer has suddenly stopped cooling with a single blinking light flashing on the control panel. This video will show you how to troubleshoot and possibly fix it with a board replacement. Stay tuned, roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome back, this is Ash from Heal My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. So this is my fridge freezer from Samsung, link below for detailed specs. Model Samsung RB31FERNDBC. Bought from John Lewis on October 2014 for £449, brand new. It came with 2 years manufacturer warranty and 10 years warranty on the inverter. Two weeks ago, the freezer started to defrost overnight, followed by the fridge. I called Samsung up and initially they told me that I was out of the two-year warranty period, but as a special one-off, they will authorize a free service call out and repair. This video is not sponsored and Samsung has not asked me to review this product. I bought this fridge freezer with my own money and the one-off free repair is independent of my channel. This is how I met Chris who kindly agreed to be filmed and share his technical know-how with all of us to troubleshoot and fix this issue. Chris has his own YouTube channel, link below, but he's not active on it yet and has only uploaded a few videos as a non-intentional YouTuber so far. Hopefully we may get him again on this channel for future projects. This is, yeah, this is the uh, temperature display. Um, if a fault develops, you end up with this blinking light. Uh, there are reference books for engineers that point towards what that fault represents. Right. So we have only have one blinking light on the fridge section mm -hmm. on number three. So that's sex that that's significant that's significant because that means there is a fault on the fridge side, not the freezer side, generally. Um funnily enough though the freezer was mm. the first thing to defrost. That's right. Because the fridge gets its temperature from the freezer section. Right. So as long as the freezer is able to maintain zero degrees, the fridge will be able to maintain one degree. Could that signify a few different causes, not just one specific cause? Um, not really. It just highlights that you have an issue with the cooling section of it, basically. Right. That is it. Generally, you, you want to do remove this cover with the power off, but I know what I'm doing, so I well, won't. <laughs> actually, we're not going to yeah. take that risk because my order is somewhat more quiet. Okay. <laughs> Always best to don't, don't remove any electrical cover with it plugged in and switched on, really. Right. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. So, what are we looking at here? So, this is the main PCB. Right. This is what controls most of the fridge basically all the temperature settings parameter settings are done by that um because we need to show the thing and this sub this is the sub invertible this is what switches on the compressor which is what supplies the cooling for the freezer section right when you switch the appliance on there should be a solid state led which signifies that this is working correctly then you can see we've got one that's flashing one flash so that means that there's a fault with either the sub invertible or the compressor itself. Where is the compressor located? The compressor is located down the back here behind. Right. This is what pumps the refrigerant around the cooling system right. in the fridge. So it could be that board or the compressor. So why do you yes. think it's the board rather than the compressor? Because nine nine times out of 10, it's just the board. It, 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 the, the LED blinking means one of two things, either the sub inverter board or the compressor. The reason we change the sub inverter board is because it's much simpler to change that than it is to reinstall the system. So what we do now is, as we can see, that's only blinking once. We'll switch her off. Allow for any residual uh, supply to dissipate. So you you kind of taking a, a, a educated guess. A, here. Yes, exactly now what it the is. First troubleshoot point. Yes. If that doesn't work, I'm guessing you're gonna have if, to test the compressor. If this doesn't work, then that means that the compressor has locked up, which means it's seized. Uh, that. What would probably would have happened in that situation is the compressor would have spat oil into the system, which means that the system can't really be repaired. But you, it is worth having a try of vacuuming out the system, see if you can uh, undo any blockages. Yeah, piece of cake. It's not even any screws. It's just undoing these plugs, un unplugging this plug here and this plug here, and then a case of pushing this plastic tab right. down to release the board. Okay. Piece of cake. Uh, they could, please. yes, they could order it online. Stop up a bit. One sec. 
So that's the reference you would need. Yeah, to... it'd be DA ninety two double O four five nine A is right. the part number there. Okay. Um, yeah, probably easily obtainable. Yeah, no, you probably would find a new one. I would never recommend buying a used one of these because right. you have no idea what condition it's going to be in. Absolutely. Installations, piece of cake. Same way in as it came out. And then just two connections. One lead there, one lead there. Now it's ready to try again to see if it's working. So fingers crossed. When we plug this in, I expect to see a few clicks and that, and then that light to say solid red, and then the compressor should start. And there we go. So we've got a solid red light. And the compressor is now engaged. How do you know it's engaged from the sound? From the sound. Right. And the fact that there's a solid state LED right. there. As okay, so as far as you're concerned, is that the repair done? Or is there any post yeah. repair test you have mm, to do? Now? Not really. I, you could spend, if you had the time, mm. so I could sit here for about an hour and then check the evaporator in the rear of the freezer section has got frost starting to develop on it and then I'm 100% sure that it's going to work after that. I'm, I'm uh, out of experience, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that, that that is going to work now. Um, right. You know, the, a lot of it is customer, um, what the customer information b before you turn up on the call and during the call. So I know that this was working before it shut down and was right, calling right. your food correctly. So there isn't mm -hmm. any reason once we've installed this for that system to now be affected. Right. Um, so that because you know the history, you don't have to do further tests. Yeah. You didn't know maybe you'd have to. Yeah. Do well, for the own for your own peace of mind, you know, uh, the more thorough you are, the more accurate you're going to be with your diagnosis and your repair. So. Right. Uh, two, two last questions. One, what other tests? Oh, by the way, you know it's the board because you know where to get the code from. And stuff. Yes. Can any member of the public go to specific websites I mean, to find uh, the code? It's it's probably classed as classified information from right. Samsung's point of view, but you know, it, it, information gets leaked, and it wouldn't be difficult for someone right. to find out the the information about that board i wouldn't have thought alternatively i'm guessing multimeter and continuity test or ohms test like you mentioned before yes could you talk about um, how would you test for this using multimeter? You, i suppose what you what you would need to do is check that there's the connection here for the um the plug for the machine you'd need to you'd need to check that that uh, has got a supply to it and then basically tracing it around to its rele relevant points. So what test um, would you do, continuity? Or well, con continuity would probably be a good one. So you could go from the, down on the compressor connection, there's three pins which you could test between there and this connection. Right. Uh, and you can test continuity there. As for actually you mean test the connection or the, onto the board. No, to disconnect this plug and test between the, right. the points and the pins down on the right. on the compressor. I don't know about testing this board um, when it's not connected to a supplier on what sort of expecting readings you you, you get because it, it's a failure of a component, a micro component right, in there. Right. Um, yeah, it's far too tricky. Okay. So any other tests you could do to determine um, if you don't have access to the code? Well, the only other thing you can do is, this is in the manual for most of them as well. It's a self-diagnosis test and it's something that customers can carry out. Right. Fridge and freezer buttons and you keep them held in. How long? Until it stops flashing. So you press both and then it stops flashing and then? And then it beeps and that tells you that it's running its diagnosis process at the time. Right. So each segment of a number represents a different component in the fridge or the freezer, right. freezer side, fridge side. Right. As before, if one was flashing independent from the rest, we'd know that that's a specific fault with the machine. I can then look that up in my little guidebook that I've got, which, um, you know, like three is, uh, sub invertible not functioning. Um, I think five is a defrost heater error, um, and then you get sensor errors and all relevant. They're all relevant to different parts of the machine, basically. Right. Just my name's Chris, and I work for Samsung. And uh, here you also have kind of a YouTube channel. Maybe you do one. Kind future. of. Do you want to mention it's, the YouTube? Channel? I, I don't even know the name of it. I think it's just Chris Betts as it goes. But. Chris, I think you should do a YouTube channel and you should share your knowledge. I'll Maybe try. not through the company, mm. but you know, on your own. 
Because a lot of people would benefit from They would. They would benefit. Puts uh, me out of a job, though. Um, <laughs> not joking. really. I mean, you your advice, but Chris, we'd love to have you on the show mm. at some point to, for your expertise on specific stuff. Mm. So do you have any last advice you can give to my audience um, on anything generally domestic in terms the, of The best bit of advice I can give you is read the user manuals and familiarize yourself with your appliances. You bought them, you paid for them, so familiarize yourself with it, read the manuals, and don't be afraid to ask questions about it. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're sure it's not doing something, then ask the question to someone who might know the answer. Go on Google, type the question in, go on YouTube, type the question in, and don't be afraid to explore something that you have bought. Um, thanks a lot, Chris. This was Ash from Heal My Tech, helping you go from a newbie to techie with our good friend Chris today. Give me a like, dislike, comment, and share this video, and subscribe if you haven't done so. Until next time, peace out.